Hello everyone, this is your host Casually Chess. And today we're going to cover a very exciting, very tactical game where I, Casually Chess, destroyed Grandmaster Yasser Sirwan in this Liz game. So before I go into the analysis of this game, I would like to talk a bit about Grandmaster Yasser's background. So he won the 1979 World Junior Chess Championships. And to put that event in perspective today, if you win that event, you win the Grandmaster title right away without going into playing for international master norms or Grandmaster norms altogether. So World Junior Chess Championships for Junior is the fastest, the quickest way to get the Grandmaster title. Now, what is Yasser Sirwan doing nowadays? Well, he is a very avid online commentator, and he commentates a lot of the world's leading chess events, including the Chess Able Masters, which is being played as we speak. And that event features top grandmasters, such as Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. Now, without further ado, let me go into the analysis of this game. So d4, d6, e4, knight f6, knight c3, this is the perk defense. And here, after g6, I play the move knight f3, which goes with the spirit of this position of developing my pieces and also supporting the very strong center pawns of d4 and d4. So I'm going to talk about some other setups in this position. So another setup potentially is to play f3, followed by bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, and h4, h5. And the idea of that setup is to have a very strong kingside attack. And the weakness is that white is very committal, and black, if played correctly, can parry white's, white's attack very easily. So white has to play very accurately as well. But the rewards are very high in that position, as if black does not know how to respond to white's attack, white can win very quickly. And this was highlighted in Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura's video, where he taught Yasuo that setup to beat stronger players. Another setup in this position is to play the move f4 with the idea of supporting the d4 pawn by playing the move e5. And after d takes e5, in this position, let's say, black, white can only take the pawn with the d pawn, which allows black to play the queen on d1. But after f4, white can just take back the e5 pawn by taking back with the f pawn, which gives white a very strong center and a very good pot position to attack on both king side and queen side. So here after g6, I played the move knight f3, bishop g7, bishop e2, long ca uh, short castle, and here I played the move h3, a very important move. Because if I just castle here, then black could just play bishop g4, trying to trade off the f3 knight, followed by c5 and knight c6, and attacking my d4 pawn with the bishop. So this puts a lot of pressure on my position. But instead, after h3, black does not have a good square for the bishop to de develop to. Because let's say black plays something like bishop e6, I could just kick the bishop back. And black, let's say, moves the bishop back to d7. Then after castles, black has nowhere to develop his knight. He can't go knight c6 because my pawn takes it. He can't go knight d7 because the bishop blocks the pathway. So the only move left for the knight is knight a6. But this is a bad move because after knight a6, bishop a6, pawn a6, the black double pawns is very ugly and it's also a very a potential weakness as I could play something like queen e2 to try to take the a6 pawn. Now the other, only other square for the light square to develop is d7, but that is also bad because after bishop d7, the same problem occurs where black blocks the pathway of the knight, which d7 is a very ideal square for the b8 knight to develop to. So after h3, Yasser plays c6, a very typical setup in this position where his idea could be to play b5, b4, to attack my c3 knight, and also take the e4 pawn. Another setup Yasser could have employed is to play d5, with the idea of 
trying to force an unfavorable pawn structure for white, which Yasser does later in the game. So I castle d5, e5, knight e8, and here I play the move bishop e3 to support the center. So the idea of d5 here by Yasser is to potentially play b b6, c5, undermine my center, because after d takes c5, the e5 pawn is weak, and also black has some potential ideas to push the d pawn. So here I play bishop e3, trying to support the center to not allow black to create some pressure on the center. Another idea Yasser has in this position is to trade off this questionable light square bishop, which he does right now. So b6, queen d2, and bishop a6. Trading off the bad light square bishop for my good light square bishop on e2. Rook c1, the idea being to try to open the c file potentially. So knight c7, bishop h6. The idea here is to try to have a strong kingside attack and also try to eliminate the g7 bishop to alleviate the pressure it puts on the e5 pawn after c5, knight c6. This e5 pawn and the center is very weak. So bishop h6 tries to alleviate that pressure. So knight e6 still putting more pressure on my center. Rook e1 trying to centralize and also potentially guard the e1 the e5 pawn with my e1 rook so here black trades the bishop trying to develop the knight later on because the bishop is holding back the knight to develop to d7 for example because i can just take the bishop so here I have some plans to take the bishop with the rook or the queen after bishop g7, knight g7, queen e2. But here I do not have a clear target to attack black with, and I do not have a clear direction to go, which is very questionable with the white pieces. So here, this is why I didn't take with the rook or the queen, but instead taking with the knight, with the idea of playing c3, having this huge pawn chain to block black's potential queenside attacks, and also moving the knight to g3 by supporting the h pawn to play h4, h5 to open up the g6 square and open up the king side for a potential attack on the king. So knight a6, c3, knight c7, and h4. So after all my maneuvering of waiting for black to make a move, I finally reached the ideal position where my queenside is very safe. The center is closed, so the only way I can win is to attack on the king side. And black does not have any counter-attacking chances. The only thing he could do is to defend, which puts me in a very favorable position. So black plays f6, trying to open up the center, creating some counterplay. E takes, e takes, and knight g3. The idea being to support my h pawn to play h4, h5 to open up the black king side. So queen d6 trying to bring the rook over to support the black king. I played h5 trying to weaken the g6 pawn because after f6, the g6 pawn is not being protected by the f7 pawn. So rook e8 trying to match my rook in this semi-open file. h takes, h takes, knight h4 putting up more pressure, forcing black to play g5, and then I can play knight f5, double attacking the queen and the bishop. So black does not want to weaken his nice, light, nicely played two pawns, and instead he played king h7. I put up more pressure by playing queen, bishop g7, knight g7, queen d3, where I attack the g6 pawn, forcing black to play f5, which opens up the squares g5 and e5 for my knight. Here, Yasser panicked by playing the move knight h5 and gave me a very good chance here. So the correct move to play here would be to play knight to h5. And after knight h5, gh5, knight e5, now I can develop my rook to e3 to play rook f3 or rook h3 to attack the two isolated rook, the, uh, pawns. But instead of playing knight h5 and seizing this initiative, I play knight e5 right away. Thinking that I will have this chance later on, thinking that black would just play some 
non-ideal move, such as knight e6, where I can just take the h5 pawn again. h5 knight, I mean. But instead, Yasser being a very strong grandmaster did not give me that chance and played knight f4, dodging my knight h5 plans. I played queen f3, now he played knight e6, cementing his structure, having all his pieces connected, and leaving no weaknesses for me to exploit. So here, I tried to play knight e2, trying to eliminate this very strong knight and bring my rook, potentially bring my rook over to h3. Yasser retreats, and now I repeat with knight g3. Feeling frustrated that I missed knight h5 in the beginning, I repeat to cool off my head and think of a plan. So here, the engine suggests to play queen d3 followed by c4. Since black's kingside is very safe now, because I do not have a target, I should switch into a second front in the center because my knight on e5 is very strong and my two rooks can potentially support a very strong center breakthrough. But here knight g3, cooling off my head before thinking of another attacking strategy, but Yasser seizes the opportunity once again by playing the move knight g5. And after queen d3, it seems like Yasser has neutralized and he should have been with knight g3, queen g3, and knight e4. And this is an almost symmetrical position where his knight matches with my knight and his pieces are kind of ideally placed as my pieces. And you see I'm slightly better here because my queen has control of the h file. But after he moves the king, he can bring the rook over. So there's not much I can do here. And it's probably going to be a draw. But here, Yasser goes away with the spirit, goes against the spirit of this position and play the move knight f6. Very questionable move and a blunder which cost him the game. Knight f6 repeats my mistake of not following through with his original idea of knight g5, which is to capture this e4 square. Maybe Yasser thought that after knight f6, he could maneuver the knight to e4 by this way. But I did not make the mistake as before by playing a weak move such as playing a3 which allows knight e4. I see this opportunity by playing the move knight f5 which opens up the center, that opens up the king side similar to before. But now it's in a much more favorable position for me since after g takes, I could take the queen. Black has to play king h8 because after king h6, Queen g6 checkmate. And after king h8, queen g5, I have these very nice two pawns and also a very strong attack where I can potentially move my rook to e3 and checkmate on h3. So Yasser did not allow this and he tries to avoid losing the game by playing queen c7, but I put on a consecutive punch by playing the move knight g6 which the engine questions it, but after king g6, knight e7, the engine still gives an evaluation of 2.3 pawns, which is still very nice for me. And I think, I think in this position, the intimidation factor triumphs the calculation factor because my idea, the, my whole attacking idea is to open up the center and open up all the files for my pieces to attack the king. And knight g6 follows the spirit of that. And... Yasser, by being, by being put into a lot of pressure, is bound to make a mistake, which he did right here. The correct move he should have played is to play king g7, moving his king back to his camp, which right now it seems like he has no defenders, but his knight and his rook can potentially block some checks made by my queen. And my pieces, my two rooks, are still very far away to give a decisive blow to black's position. The only thing I could have accomplished after king g7 is to win back the knight and win some material. But the game could have prolonged there. And I'm still much better, but maybe Yasser could find some counter-attacking chances in the end game. But instead, Yasser, feeling very confident about his king, moved king h5, taunting me, provoking me to checkmate him. Which I did, unfortunately for him because I accepted his invitation by playing queen g6. Boom, king g4, f3. And now, Yasser resigned. Because after king g5, queen g5, knight g4, and 
and queen g4 checkmate. And there is no way for him to stop checkmate in three. So hopefully you all enjoyed this analysis. And if you did, please leave a like button and share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe as the next video, I will cover a very exciting game where I destroyed the beloved chess.com commentator, Grandmaster Robert Hess. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you all to my lovely casually chess stars for watching and staying along with me to the end of the video. And until next time, bye-bye.